Welcome back to the tailgate. Please bear with any background noise you might hear. I'm near a federal highway. I'm in the flight path of an international airport. I'm near a railroad and my neighbors only tend to come out and be obnoxious and make noise when I set up a tripod in my driveway or my yard. So you just don't know what you're gonna hear. This morning, I decided to check all the lights on my truck while I was warming it up. It was dark out and that's a really good time to just do a quick inspection. And with the truck being almost three years old and having almost 50,000 miles on it, it finally happened. I burned out a lamp. Fortunately, today I'm doing some maintenance on the truck. I'm doing an oil change, adding some diesel exhaust fluid, um, refilling the washer fluid, and just doing a couple of other odds and ends because I'm about to take it on a road trip. So if I was going to have a, a lamp burn out, today would definitely be the day to do it. Incidentally, I wanted to note that for the oil change today, I'm going to be using a Fram Extra Guard filter. And in checking the label, it says that it is made in South Korea. In some of my other videos, I've talked about where some of the filters or other parts for the truck are made, at least what's on the packaging. And I thought I would go ahead and note that. So I found it interesting that this truck will message me to let me know that I'm low on diesel exhaust fluid or I got a tire going flat or other things like that. But I got no indication either on the dashboard or information center or through my app or anything like that, that I had a burned out tail lamp. Now that could be for one or two reasons. One, it doesn't sense it. It's just not something that, that this truck does, which I find kind of strange because this truck has got a lot of bells and whistles on it. It's really nice. But my 2004 Dodge Ram had a lamp out light on the dashboard. And if any exterior bulb burned out, it would chime and the lamp out light would, would light up. It wouldn't tell you which bulb was burned out. You had to get out of the truck and figure out which one it was, but at least it would tell you. And this one doesn't. Now that might be because it's not a feature on this truck, or it might be the fact that only one of the two filaments in this lamp is burned out. This is the upper right running light, tail light. There's two filaments in there, one for the parking lights or the running lights and the other for the turn signal and brake light. The turn signal and brake light work on the truck, but the other lamp is, or the other filament has uh, burned out, or blown, and I've got to replace this bulb. Now the replacement is very simple. If you're not sure what to do, you can check your owner's manual and it will show you what to do. Unfortunately, I'm casting a shadow on this and it's not something you can really read uh, on the video, but just go ahead and look into your owner's manual under vehicle care and it will have a pretty good explanation with the illustrations on how to remove the lamp. Now, just like on my 2004 Dodge Ram, it's very simple. There are two sheet metal screws that go through the side of the bed into the taillight assembly. You just simply use a T15 screwdriver or you can get one of these fold up sets of Torx keys. They're very uh, handy to have or a uh, socket with the Torx bit or something like that. Anything that's got a T15 you can go ahead and use to remove these screws. Once you do that, you've got to kind of give the assembly a wiggle. It's going to make a popping noise and then you've got to pull it outward. The first time you do it, there might you might need to use a little bit of excessive force to remove it because it's it's been in there since it's uh, built in the factory and it might seem like you're going to break it, but it will pop free. All right, I've repositioned the camera and waited for the guy with the exhaust leak to go driving by. Now I've already removed this to do prep for the video to make sure everything was good to go. So this might come out a little bit easier for me on camera than it will for you if this is your first time doing it. Well, I would think it would be the first time you're doing it. You're watching a tutorial video. So the screws come out really easy. And I'll just set those on the tailgate. And after waiting for another vehicle to pass by, you simply just Pull away from the truck, pull outboard of the bed, and you could hear that, that popping noise. Now that you've got it out some away from the bed, you pull back. Now you're going to have to wiggle the top and bottom. The bottom might come out a little bit easier, and it sounds like you're breaking it. It feels like you're breaking it. 
but you're not. There's just these plastic, I guess you could call them plugs, that go right into the sheet metal of the bed. Almost like a Christmas tree type fasteners you would have for say an interior trim piece or something, except these are uh, these don't have the little uh, little spines or ledges on them like a, a Christmas tree. So the lamp will be the top lamp here. And I'm simply just gonna give the socket a twist to the left counterclockwise. And pull it out. And there we go. All right, I took the camera off the tripod. I thought I'd try to get a closer shot here. Show you, here's the plastic retainers on the back of the tail lamp assembly. I've just got it propped on the bumper here. And here's a close up of the lamp in the socket. You can see here's the holes in the body in the bed of the truck that these plastic retainers just pop right into. I've been cleaning it off with a rag. That's not necessary, but I thought I'd try to get some of the dirt out of there before I put all this back in. In order to remove the lamp, simply grasp the socket with one hand, hold it firm, and grab the bulb with the other. Be careful not to squeeze down too hard. You don't want to break it and cut yourself. You can wear gloves if you'd like to. And all you're going to do is keep the socket from moving and pull back on the bulb. Just sort of give it a wiggle back and forth, side to side. And it should come out just like that. I'm filming the installation portion of this video later in the day, so the sun has moved. And unfortunately, no matter where I position the tripod, I'm casting a shadow. I'll try to do my best not to block the shot and I'll explain as I go along. Also, as I stated earlier in the video, please pardon any background noise you might hear. I've already had a few cars fly down the street at excessive speed and my neighbors, they've already been out. This tripod just draws them in like a magnet. So if the truck was older, I would be inspecting the wire harness and the socket for any sort of damage or make sure it was uh, clean. If there's any sort of dirt or anything in the socket, that could be a problem. If there was a frayed wire, some other sort of damage, you can buy replacement sockets and splice them in. I'll be using dielectric grease in the socket. Now, not everybody does this. This is something I learned from an old mechanic years ago and I've been doing it for decades. I haven't had an issue with it. I just put some dielectric grease in there. It's just clear. This is not white lithium grease. This is not bearing grease. This is meant for electrical use. So this grease will protect the socket from corrosion. We have salt spray here in Michigan because we use road salt in the winter to deal with the snow and the ice. And it also makes it a little bit easier if I have to replace the lamp at a later point. It's not gonna hurt anything. You don't have to use it, but I prefer to. The replacement lamp is a 7443. I bought this at the local auto parts store. It just comes in a pack of two. As some people say, don't touch the glass with your fingers. The oil from your fingers will get through the porous glass and ruin the lamp. And that's not just with these, that's with other lamps. I, I don't subscribe to that. It might be true, but I don't subscribe to that. If you want to wear gloves when you do this, that's up to you. It might not be a bad idea just because if you shatter the glass, that could be a problem. So with the new lamp installed, I'll just put the socket into the back of the housing. And with my left hand here, so I don't block the shot too bad, just wiggle it until it drops right into place and then twist it clockwise or to the right. There's ears on the back of this socket and I just use my thumb and my forefinger on opposite hands to just give it a twist and lock it into place. Then I will align the tail lamp assembly with the bed of the truck where it's stamped out for it and it should line up and just pop into place. 
just like that. I'll take my sheet metal screws and I'll make sure that the holes are aligned, the slotted hole in the sheet metal of the bed and the hole for the screw that is part of the tail lamp assembly and I'll simply just start them by hand. Putting some pressure on the tail lamp so it's nice and flush, I'll go ahead and tighten them down. I'm not going to tighten this first one all the way. I'm just going to get it snug, a little bit less than snug, and then I'll tighten down the bottom one all the way. You can tell I'm not a lefty. Get that nice and tight. I'll go back up to the top one here, tighten that down, and it's in. That's it. That's all there is to it. I keep the lights in auto most of the time. I went ahead and put them in manual. You can see it's lit. To make sure the other filament's working, I turned on the hazards. So that's all there is to it. It doesn't take very long to do. Anybody can do this. It's fairly simple. You don't even need a garage. The only tool you need is a T15 screwdriver if you don't already have one. These are available at most automotive parts stores or hardware stores and don't cost a lot of money. The lamps should be available at any automotive parts store and don't really cost a lot of money. I'm going to keep the second lamp as a spare for next time. The dielectric grease is optional. This small tube doesn't cost a lot of money. And I use dielectric grease on electrical connections, on automotive applications, all throughout the vehicle, not just for changing out light bulbs. Hopefully somebody found this video useful. Thanks for watching.